Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I am hoping that this is recording. I haven't been on the radio ministry in a long time. Um, as I told you, I'm doing deliverance cases as well as ministering to military families, soldiers, and regular, you know, other various people. I wanted to discuss a few things with you regarding a counterfeit fast, as you notice the title of the video. Um, I'm going to try to make this one segment in this video. Before I get into that, I wanted to um, talk to you guys and just let you know that whenever I'm led by the Holy Spirit to do an exposure video, um, Whenever I'm led, it's not an easy thing to talk about someone in that manner, you know, to, to expose someone it's, it, and, and to bring that to light. But it's got to be done. Okay. Um, the reason why I'm talking to you now is I'm going to give you an example. Rachel Sheriff made a video that she is going to do a two-week fast, which I talked to Jesus Christ about it, because you're not supposed to tell the public that you're doing a that you're um that you're doing a fast. Okay, it is a sin to do that. The Lord says you don't need to let the public know that you're fasting. You're supposed to be meek, fast in private between you and the Most High, because He will know what you're doing. Now, he will know what, you know, what you do, what you say before you even think it, okay? And then you'll reap your rewards in heaven. She's afflicted with a demonic spirit that is responsible for counterfeit fasting. I'm going to make this very, give you several examples of counterfeit fasting. Counterfeit fasting is when you're fasting and you're living in sin. But yet you claim to be right by God, but you're still living in sin. Another example of counterfeit fast at which is a sin is when you're fasting and you have a false faith that's a sin in itself when you are fasting and you are in sin that is a dead work that fast is not recognized by the most high god uh you will also attract other demonic spirits You will attract other demonic spirits. Okay? A counterfeit fast is when, you know, a fast period is when you could be fasting off food, off water. I've told you this, guys. I told you guys this before. There's various types of fast. Some people fast from meat, some people fast from uh, vegetables. Some people will just eat only fruits and salad and drink water, like Daniel, like a Daniel fast. Okay, the fast is supposed to make you very hungry. I know this sounds strange, but it's supposed to make you very hungry spiritually and physically. You become so um, afflicted. You afflict yourself to the point, where, meaning that you deny the you deny yourself. This is a this is what a this is what a a good fast, a holy fast, is supposed to be. I'm explain that first. You deny yourself what you normally love, the foods that you normally love. So in essence, you're denying the flesh, okay? So you then become afflicted because you're denying your flesh the foods that you love. In that affliction, you start to turn to Jesus Christ and become more dependent and you start to pray more. So instead of depending on food, you start sustaining yourself with the word of God, praying of um, through also sustaining yourself via prayer, sustaining yourself via um, fellowshipping with the most high God, Lord Jesus Christ, spending quality time with the Lord. OK, when you do that, you you um, your walk becomes closer with the Lord because you're spending so much time with the Lord Jesus Christ that you're not even sinning. 
that you're living righteous, that it's just you and the Lord, that you're renewing and, and replenishing your relationship with the Most High God, Jesus Christ. When you are fasting, I'm going to let you know something right now. Your prayers are more effective. You get more revelations from Jesus Christ because you're more closer to him. You get closer access to God through true fasting. And remember, before you fast, you have to repent, confess, repent of your sins, go through the correction, okay, so you can prepare for that fast. So when you start the fast, you have not one spot of sin on you. Then you go through a, a holy fast that is pleasing to Jesus Christ. It'll narrow your walk with the Lord. It'll make you more closer to the Father. And you will get revelations. You will get dreams. You will get visions that are from the Lord. Again, we must always test the spirits. Amen? That's the true fast. I'm just kind of giving you a crash course on what a true fast is. And I'm going to give you scriptures to... um. I will give you scriptures to back it up. If you go to Isaiah chapter 58, fasting that pleases God, okay, I'm going to take you down to a verse that says, when you are fasting, you have to seek righteousness. When you fast, you are, your, your soul is getting afflicted. It says in chapter 3, uh, I'm sorry, verse 3, why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen, and why have, why have we afflicted our souls and you have no choice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your labors. Um, that's referencing the fact that when you get into a true holy fast, your soul is being afflicted. But again, remember, there's always a counterfeit fast where you will find your pleasure, meaning people will fast, but they will fast. You got some people that will fast for their own pleasure, to seek the glory of man. So they will televise it. That is a counterfeit fast. That's an example, another example of a counterfeit fast. Okay, you can fast to get close to the Lord, to get through a crisis, to um, help you with the sin you may be struggling with. Remember, you must be without spot when you begin a fast. Okay, there's evidence in, in this scripture that says in verse 4, okay, this is evidence what I told you, that if you fast while you're in sin, okay, it is not a fast that is recognized by the Most High God, Jesus Christ. Verse 4, indeed you fast for strife and debate. And to strike with the fist of wickedness. That's what Rachel Sheriff is fasting for. Her fast is counterfeit. And it also says you will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Verse 5 says, is it a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Verse 5 is saying that Father God chooses a fast, a holy fast, for a man that is without sin, that is righteous by God's eyes, that is willing to afflict his soul and deny his flesh for the Father. Okay? The verse goes on to say, Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? That's what's a holy fast. Would you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? A holy fast to do the will solely of the Father. Okay? When you are fasting, you have to be free from the bonds of wickedness, from the bonds of sin. Verse 6, Is this not the fast that I have chosen to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, like I just told you guys, to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. So you fast, okay? You cannot be in sin. You fast to loose yourself completely from the bonds of wickedness, to give all of your burdens to the Father, and, and any kind of oppression you have, give that to the Father, because it is the Father that fights our battles, amen? The Father uses us in a mighty way, but it is the Father that fights our battles, not us. Okay? Um, also, I'm going to read you verse 7. Remember the scripture that says that the Lord says, um, did you feed them when they were hungry? When the Lord comes back. Remember that? The book of Revelation? My son's with me. So the Lord's going to ask, um, those that claim to the Lord, did I prophesy in your name? Or if the Lord, didn't I prophesy? Didn't I cast out uh, devils? The Lord will say, get thee behind me, Satan. Remember that scripture, ladies and gentlemen? Where the Lord will literally ask, did you feed my flock? Or did you feed the, the hungry? Did you visit the sick? Did you clothe the naked? Verse 7, it talks about, is it not to share your bread with the hungry? 
and that you bring into and that you bring to your house the poor you are cast out when you are, when you see naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh see how that scripture fits i believe it's in the book of revelation remember so when you're fasting you also have to do the will of the lord which means helping others so fasting is to get you closer to the Lord Jesus Christ, to live in righteous, live a life of righteousness. You afflict your soul, and you still, even though you're afflicted, you still help others. Okay, so verse 8, then your light shall bring forth light coming. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. That means you're being healed through the fasting, and your righteousness shall go before you. That means that you'll be made righteous before God's eyes through the holy fast. The glory of the Lord shall, shall be your rear guard. Okay. Verse 10. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy your the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as the noonday. So your darkness will be peeled away by the light in your eyes because the light in your eyes means that you'll have righteousness in the entire body. Remember that word? So... When you're fasting, the Lord will guide you, okay? You're Even though you're going to be thirsty and hungry, and you're going to feel weak, okay? You're going to be strong in the Lord Jesus Christ. Like it says in verse 11, you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fall, the water of life that is of Jesus Christ. You're going to be like the Garden of Eden, watered with the water of life of Jesus Christ that is of the Holy Spirit, and you're going to be replenished. You're going to be renewed, okay? Your soul is not going to be in drought anymore. You might be physically hungry, but you're going to sustain yourself spiritually with the word of God. You might be spirit. You might be spiritually, uh, sorry, physically thirsty, but spiritually that thirst is going to be quenched with the water of life that is of the Holy Spirit. So verse 11 in a whole says the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Okay. So this verse, this this um chapter, verse I chapter Isaiah, I'm sorry, Isaiah 58 talks about a holy fast that is pleasing to God. Okay, you guys, um So that's an example of a holy fast. Now, an unholy fast, like I said, is when you're fasting while you're in sin. People that fast when they have a false faith, people that publicize their fast, people that fast for the glory of man. They tell people that they're fasting, people that fast for their own agenda, for their own purposes. OK, you cannot do that because that is led by by a demonic spirit, excuse me, of counterfeit fast. When you fast, ladies and gentlemen, a counterfeit fast, you draw in the kundalini spirit. You you will attract the kundalini spirit. I've worked on deliverance cases like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to switch the side a little bit. When you are um fasting, a holy fast, Okay, it is great for spiritual warfare. It works wonders in deliverance cases. I've used it many times. I fast and done deliverance cases as well. I'm telling you this as a testimony for Christ. Remember, I told you that if I'm doing something, like if I'm fasting, I'm not fasting now. I'm told you I fast before, but this is as a testimony of Jesus Christ to help you out. Okay, I fast before and I've done deliverance cases at the same time. And it has packed a punch in that deliverance case because fasting is like a thousand atomic bombs, even more than that, thousand suns. Okay, you become more spiritually stronger in the Lord Jesus Christ by the moving and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Ladies and gentlemen, when you are fasting a holy fast, it can draw, it can put you on a demonic radar, so to speak. Okay, I'm just letting you know that. Because when you fast and you're praying and you're close to the Lord Jesus Christ, you become a threat 
to the demonic realm. And demonic spirits will come after you with everything they've got. I've had it happen to me before. So I'm not telling you not to do a holy fast. I recommend it highly. But just, you know, know that those demonic spirits, you will, not that you mean to, but the spirit, the holy, the holy fast is, is recommended. You will attract demonic spirits to you that they shouldn't even be coming to you because it's illegal, okay? Because when you're doing a holy fast, you're not in sin. So those demonic spirits shouldn't be coming to you because it's an elite. They're not, they're coming to you because they perceive you as a threat. But they're not supposed to be coming to you and try to force themselves on you because it's an illegal entry because you're not living in sin while you're doing that holy fast, okay? But don't worry because... Everything is possible with the Lord Jesus Christ and the blood of the Lamb. For, for worthy is the Lamb of God that is slain for all that was slain for all of mankind. Amen. So I'm going to explain the other part. If you do an unholy fast, an ungodly fast, that's a sin in itself. You will draw demons to you. Those demons at that point have legal rights because you're already living in sin. You will also attract the Holy Spirit, the unholy spirit, unholy spirit. You know what I meant, right, Father God? Lord Jesus Christ, please forgive me for saying holy. You will attract the unholy spirit. Unholy spirit meaning counterfeit to the beautiful Holy Spirit, which is the rural Kakadesh, our comforter. The unholy counterfeit spirit is the Kundalini spirit. So that unholy fast will tap into the ungodly power of the unholy spirit. It will actually draw the unholy kundalini spirit. But when you do a holy fast, the light of the holy spirit will shine in you. You will tap into the power of the holy spirit. You will be that holy spirit's vessel. The rule of the Lord Jesus Christ. For greater is he that dwells in us than we that are in the world. Okay, so I'm just explaining the differences of the two fasts to you. And um, I'm just explaining it to you because, let me bring this up to you right now. Because, like I said, Rachel Sheriff is doing an ungodly demonic fast. Okay. So it's obvious she's afflicted with that spirit, and that spirit is rampant on YouTube, rampant all about, okay? So I just had to explain this to you so you know that that demon actually does exist. There are many types of fasts. If you have any questions on what specific fast, seek the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I also wanted to touch base on something else real quick. Um... She declared, Rachel Sheriff declared that she's a prophet of God. She's not. Uh, she's prophesied something else. She's prophesied that, um, I already told you about the rapture. She prophesied, oh, July 2015 to get underground, that the pit was going to open up again. Uh, that hasn't happened. We're still here. So she prophesied the same thing last year that didn't come to pass. The girl's got issues. She's crazy. Forgive me for saying, okay. What I'm trying to say to you is that she is bound by a Jezebel spirit so powerful that she can't even see it past that darkness. Like she's full of darkness. Dark in the eyes and everything. Uh... She uh, she really believes she hears from the Lord Jesus Christ, and she doesn't. So, when one declares themselves to be a prophet publicly, that's a pride spirit speaking through that person. Because like I told you before, the prophets of old never ever declared that they were a prophet of God. Okay? Never. They thought themselves least of everyone. This woman, Rachel Sheriff, Rachel Loves the Lord, is not a prophet. She's a prophet, all right. 
but a prophet of the devil. But she's not a prophet of God. Because Jesus Christ is not a liar. Jesus Christ will never, ever, ever, ever tell a prophet a prophecy, and then that prophecy doesn't happen. He doesn't do that. You know, that that prophecy becomes false. He doesn't do that. Jesus Christ will prophesy to his prophets and give them warnings of what's to come, that if someone doesn't listen, that prophecy will come to pass on the Lord's appointed time. But Jesus Christ is not going to give a person a prophecy, a date, and then that prophecy comes and goes and doesn't happen. See, God's not a liar, ladies and gentlemen. When you have a false prophet like this that prophesied the raptures July 2013, or like Minister Paul that said that California was going to be full of Ebola and that didn't happen, and it doesn't happen, it comes, and it doesn't come to pass, that's the devil giving the prophecies. That's not God. Because Jesus Christ is not a liar. Ladies and gentlemen. So I just wanted to address that to you very quickly. Speaking of fasting, I recommend you, you go on a fast. I recommend you take time off of YouTube. I recommend that you fast for three days to seven days. Go into your prayer closet, prayer closet, excuse me, with Jesus Christ. And ask the Lord if what you're being told is true. Seek Jesus on everything, okay? I don't have many subscribers on my channel. I don't care about subscribe. I care about people. Don't get me wrong. I don't care about the subscriber numbers or view numbers. If you subscribe to a false prophet, you can hit the unsub button because I'm not going to sit here and debate with you. I know these two people I just ministered, mentioned to you, Minister Paul and Rachel Sher, are false prophets. There's undeniable proof, okay? Um, the video that I have uploading that's going to be one probably before this entitled The Lord Uses an Evil Agent to Expose a False Prophet or Rachel Sheriff, something like that that video Satan tried to stop from going up four times <laughs> I tried to upload it plus um, I saw demonic spirits coming at me and I had to use the name of Jesus because I tried to upload that video proof that Satan didn't want his false prophet exposed so I'm gonna stop this video here ladies and gentlemen I will continue to talk about demonic deliverances I mean you know what I mean, delivering demons, legal rights, stuff like that. I've done videos about that before. I will talk about that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you well. Remember, we're in the last days. Things are not looking good out there. And um, I've seen so much. I've told you in videos, I've seen angels. I've seen Jesus Christ show me heaven many times. I've seen demons. I've confronted demons and engaged in spiritual battle using the mighty name of Jesus Christ by the soul moving and strength of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not by my own strength, by the Lord, strength of the Lord. Okay? So, with that being said, stay grounded in the Lord. Stay focused because we are in the last days. I'm not going to be on here as much doing many videos because of what I'm doing for the Lord outside of the ministry, which is part of ministry as well. Um, I work a lot. It's surprising that I did two videos back to back. I usually don't do that anymore. Uh, messages that I get from Jesus, I will upload as I receive them. I don't get messages every day. The Lord talks to me all the time. I hear his voice. But whenever he tells me to upload a message, I will. And rest assured, it's going to be consistent with the prophets of old. It's going to be the same. It's not going to be different. Because the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. As is the word of God. For the word of God is eternal. But heaven and earth shall pa can pass away. But the Lord and the word of God is eternal. And so is the righteous. Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Be blessed. Take care of yourself. And stay away from demons.
and false prophets and use the mighty name of Jesus Christ.